Welcome traders to another tick mill earnings season preview with me Patrick Munley. Before we jump into today's report as always we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer most pertinent for today's presentation is the fact that views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report. We are looking at Amazon. Amazon are set to announce earnings after the close of trade in New York today. We are looking for an EPS of 0.213 on estimated revenue of 124.575 billion. Now, in terms of the earnings report, obviously a slowdown in online shopping activities, foreign currency headwinds, elevated staffing costs and supply chain disruptions are likely to be a concern. Growing inflationary pressure on fuel, energy and transportation costs might well have negatively impacted Amazon's first quarter performance. Yet Amazon's strengthening distribution network and prime enable fast delivery and grocery services are expected to evade the performance of its e-commerce business in the quarter to be reported tonight. Prime benefits, which include strong loyalty system, customer friendly offers, quick grocery delivery services and robust prime free one day and prime free same day delivery services are expected to have also aided customer momentum in this quarter. In the first quarter, the company made a previously launched uh, Prime Benefit Buy With Prime widely available to US-based merchants. Buy With Prime allows Prime members in the United States to shop directly from merchants, online stores, and avail fast and free delivery service. A smooth checkout experience and easy returns, this is expected to have encouraged Prime subscriptions. Apart from these initiatives, the company's aggressive stance on the core retail industry, especially grocery retail, is expected to have benefited the quarterly performance. The company's strengthening e-commerce business worldwide, along with the expanding global footprint of Prime, are expected to have contributed well. The growing momentum of its cashierless technology might have been a positive. Uh, rapid deployment of its palm scanner payment technology, Amazon One, is likely to also benefit, benefit the company in this quarter. Um, this, apart from strengthening relationships with third-party sellers on the back of strong solution offerings, may well also have aided growth of third-party seller services sales in the quarter to be reported. Coming to streaming services, obviously solid momentum across Prime Video is expected to have been a major tailwind in this quarter. Expanding original content, regional content, and the overall content portfolio on Prime Video are expected to have driven the Prime subscription uh, for this quarter. And then we come to the flagship, Amazon Web Services. The company's expanding web services portfolio is expected to really have uh, boosted performance in this quarter. The company made a fully managed service called AWS Telco Network Builder generally available. This service automates deployment and management of telco networks on the Amazon Web Service platform. With this service, AWS is likely to have gained momentum among communication service providers during this quarter. This apart, uh, the company's increasing number of availability zones and regions is also expected to have continued to act as a major tailwind. We also have the uh, development of smart device portfolio, uh, which is expected to uh, really have been robust in this quarter. It's an eco of smart speakers is expected to have contributed uh, really strongly. Its strengthening portfolio of fire devices is anticipated to have been beneficial in the quarter. The company unveiled three new sizes, a 43 inch, 50 inch and 55 inch in the Fire TV Omni QLED series. In addition, Amazon rolled out the Fire TV 2 series, which offers both Fire TV and the Alexa experience in one platform. Strengthening Alexa features is likely to have aided Amazon as well this quarter. And we will also note there has been a deepening focus in uh, within the business on healthcare. Amazon's growing efforts towards bolstering its presence in the booming healthcare industry are really expected to be an interesting point in this report. So now we have an overview of where Amazon are at from a revenue perspective, EPS, and generally where the business is positioning itself. And we are expecting a, uh, a very positive uh, report this evening. Let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns that we uh, have witnessed around Amazon earnings. 
Amazon shares have moved lower in the immediate aftermath of earnings, 8 out of 12 previous reports. On average, the stock moved down 0.9% in the first day of trading after the company reported earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, Amazon is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for an average loss of 0.4%. However, on average, the stock has moved lower by 0.2% one week after earnings. Let's take a look at where we are from the analyst community and uh, in terms of the 53 analysts that have issued a stock rating on Amazon in the past quarter, 39 have it as a strong buy, uh, eight as a buy, five as a hold, and only one strong sell. In terms of the price metrics over the next 12 months, we have a max upside there of 155, uh, an average of 130, and then a low of 80. $5. In terms of sentiment and flow, options traders are pricing in a 5.9% move on this earnings release. The stock has averaged 6.8% move in recent quarters. The options market has overestimated Amazon's stock earnings move 50% of the time in the last 13 quarters. Now, notably, there has been 37,728 contracts bid on the 110 call, which is expiring on Friday. And options order flow generally has been bullish. Going into the earnings, you have 70% of investors expecting an earnings beat. With all that said, let's pull up the chart and see where we might find a trading opportunity. So Amazon closed last night. Uh, oh, that's Wednesday at 105, uh, 104.96 per share. They're opening up today at 108. Now, importantly, the tech earnings so far, Microsoft, uh, Google, and Meta have all outperformed. And I think they, the stock is getting a natural lift from the, the sector performance at this stage. From a technical perspective for myself, I would be looking to buy any break of the 109.50. I want to engage on the long side. We have a technical upside objective versus the swing structure and that 88.07 low gives us 120.66 on the upside. So like I say, any break of that 109.50 on a closing basis, I want to engage on the long side and look for a grind up into uh, once we retest these prior swing highs here, 114, expect a little bit of uh, congestion there potentially, but ultimately we look then for a break to the upside to target 120.66 as the next technical upside objective uh, for the stock. At this stage, it would really take a close back through the high volume node here at 102 to suggest a, a more meaningful pullback uh, could develop. And then we look to support back into the 97.77 area. Monthly projected range support sits at 94.12. But for now, like I say, I'm constructive and bullish and looking to engage on the long side. And we're targeting a test up to 120.66. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.